Good morning, East Bristol Baptist. Happy Mother's Day. Thanks again for tuning in this week and watching the services. We appreciate you doing that so much. We can see those numbers, uh, and we appreciate you tuning in each week. We hate that we have to keep coming to you from the Internet, from our, uh, from our webpage, but uh, this quarantine uh, has thrown this curveball, and, and uh, although it's, we're, it's getting old, I must say, uh, we, uh, we want to continue to do things to reach out and to share the gospel uh, each and every week, and we do appreciate you tuning in. This week's message is Praise of a Virtuous Woman. It's brought to us by, from Proverbs uh, chapter 31, verses 10 through 31. And uh, our special music is brought to us this week by Tommy and Lisa. They're doing a, a great uh, Gaither gospel song entitled Going Home. And then because it's Mother's Day, I've asked Lisa to do me a favor and sing my mother's favorite song in honor of my mother this morning, Rock of Ages. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you again for tuning in. We hope to see you again very, very soon as a congregation. I know it's just around the corner. You guys keep praying. We're going to be praying for you. If you have a need, if you have a prayer request, please reach out to the pastor, uh, to a deacon, to myself. Let us know, and we'll be praying with you for that need. And again, happy Mother's Day. From the books of Proverbs, chapter 30, and verse 5, there the Bible says, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. This morning, as we gather to hear the word of God, this is Mother's Day, and we want to uh, praise our mothers. I think that's what God would have us to do. The title of our message is Praise of a Virtuous Woman. And that is taken from Proverbs, chapter 31, verses 10 through 31. Now, as we go into this, I guess we have to ask a question. Is how would you describe a virtuous woman? Well, I think the very first thing we have to look at is one that fears God. And the Bible is, has a lot to say about fearing of God. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Uh, and he upbraideth not, and it is the fear of God, it is given to us. But so we would say that it is one that fears God. How about moral excellency or goodness? That is another uh, great thing about virtue and exceptional character. Uh, we don't find a lot of that in our society today, but hopefully there are several. And so we would like to describe this and this can be either a virtue, could be either a man or a woman. So I was wanting to, as I was studying this, I was wanting to look at this right here. Uh, think about the home. When you, a man and a woman, are married, and uh, they are divided by virtue. You know, not all marriages are both Christian, nor all non-Christian. A lot of times... There are one is Christian, one not Christian. But we have to look at this and how does this affect that marriage? Listen to, the, to this. Can a home be happy without virtue? What about the children? You take, uh, say, one or the other of the marriage, they get up and say, we want to go to church. But the other one says, oh, I don't want to. And that happens, folks. But what about the little children as they come along? How does this affect them? Do they take the moral values of the one and the immoral values maybe of the other? So God wants to bless that home. But as the Scripture says in Mark chapter 3 and verse 25, if a ha house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. So... What do we want in our marriages, in our homes? Do we want a solid stance that would show us all that God wants to bless that home? May I say to you right now, God is out for your good. Husband, wife, 
children. He's out for good for that family. But we have to take what the Word of God says, we have to apply it into our home, into our family. And God, He's watching. He's watching over us, but He also has great desire that we would follow Him and do as He has asked us to do. Now, I was studying for this, and I found in the book of Ruth, chapter 3 and verse 11, here is Boaz, a, a kinsman, redeemer of the family, and uh, the Bible says in Ruth 3.11, and here uh, is Boaz speaking to Ruth, and he says, Now, my daughter, fear not. I will do to thee all that thou requestest, for all the faith, for all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. How would God describe us today? Not only the women, but the men. How would He describe us? Would He look at us and say, You are on track according to the Word of God, the way I have given it, and I want you to follow that. Uh, we have a nation where that is not the, the favored thing all the time. But God's looking. He's watching. He wants the best for us. I think so much about our little children that they need a, to have a happy beginning, but also how they turn out. Look at that. Little children. Should we not be teaching them the Word of God, having them in Sunday school, uh, moms, dads, that they can learn about God because it is so, so important because it affects all their life. When we think about our lives, as most of us have grown up and we have received values or lack of values, but what would God require? What does He require of you? What does He want of you? He's wanting a, house, a household that truly believes and serves God. Now, the Bible says in uh, chapter 31, verse 10, there it starts, it says, Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. And we're talking about price, we're talking about value, we're talking about worth. Uh, who can find that virtuous woman? Now, I studied about this, and I thought a lot about this, and you take a ruby. That is a very expensive uh, 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 stone, but a ruby is only for this world. What about the virtuous woman that truly knows God and serves God and tries her best to promote the ways of God? Her, her life is going to be everlasting because it's through Jesus Christ. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her so that she shall have no need of spoil. Well, she does him right. Look at verse 12. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. You know what? I believe a virtuous woman lives by conviction. Now, when we think about conviction, we're not saying you're guilty. That's not what he says at all. But what he does say and what it means is that I live by the standards of God, by the Word of God. But God, He wants the very best. And I believe that. So uh, verse 27, it says... She looketh well to the ways of her household, and she eateth the bread, eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children rise up, call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Wow, that's a mouthful to say about a virtuous woman. Now, most of us, uh, the grown-ups, we, we have uh, wives, and so we have to ask ourselves, what value is my wife? To, to myself, and also to my family. What about my children? Has she uh, done them well in the way of leading them in a, in a Christian way of values? Or has she went against that? But it affects not only the children, it affects the whole household. Verse 29 says, Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Boy, I tell you what. Isn't that something great to be said about a woman? What about our day? Uh, we have a lot of ladies in our church here, and we like to see and look the very best for them, and we do uphold them. We do lift them up, 
because they are a lot of times the pillar of households and they can be of great value to a church and I believe that's what we have here in a lot of ways. Beauty is deceitful and beauty is vain but a woman that feareth the Lord she shall be praised. What, what do you think about that? When will she be praised? Think about it now. I say it's at that uh, judgment seat of Christ. Who will be praising her, folks? Think about it. Her life lived the way she has uh, taught others. Her testimony. I think the Lord himself will praise that woman because uh, she has followed his ways. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. How does the world look at us? Especially our ladies as we're uh, celebrating Mother's Day. How does the world look at that? If we truly live for God, people are going to notice. They look at you. They watch you. You might even get remarks from people about uh, how you act and what you stand for and how you've raised your children and what values that you promote to this world. They do see, they do know, and that's what we want to promote. Now, when we look at a, a, a virtuous mother, we, there's a lot of things described in this section right here, and we want to touch on some of them. But uh, I'm going to start with just a few. I can't cover them all. There's 25 different descriptions given here in this uh, verse. But I'm going to touch on a few. She's rare. You look, you consider, how many virtuous women will you meet in your life? Hopefully many. That's what our desire is. And here's some descriptions. She's trustworthy. Trustworthy. Her husband does not have to wonder about her because he knows that she's true. He knows that she is honest. And that's what he sees in her. And that's why he can tell others, I've got a virtuous wife. I love her, and I want to uphold her. But she is trustworthy. She is constant in her love. Wow. Love, in our day, love, it is used a lot of times just, uh, just uh, uh, not looking at it as we should. But true love is one that stands for a family. What does your family mean to you, truly? Is it just acquaintance? Or is it a gathering to where you can hug each other? You can tell each other how much you love each one? That's what true love is all about. And uh, she's compassionate. Folks, that is something great in our world today because you don't see a lot of compassion. You see a lot of, you hear a lot of words, but compassion, when people hurt, do we hurt? When we have a church member that's truly hurting and in need, do we answer that call? God's told us to. He has told us to do that. She is not swayed by circumstance. Wow. Stay the course. However God has led us, we need to stay the course, walk arm in arm with God and reaching out to those that have our need and have our de a desire for that we help them. She's wise and kind. You don't see that all the time. It's day and time. Wisdom comes from God. Kindness is an off-throw of what Jesus has taught. Think of all the times that he taught about how to be kind to others. He took the little children up in his arms and he loved them. He blessed them. Should we not do the same? I know here at East Bristol Baptist, I know our children mean a lot to, the, to us. I know that uh, we have some wonderful kids here and we thank God for them. But there's other, other types of uh, dis discussion here. She is duty conscious. She's not lazy. There are 
chances, there's opportunities for women to reach out. And many do. Thank God for that. She is blessed by her family and friends. That is something great. We look at that mom. We look at how she handles situations. She soothes. Have you ever noticed what a difference there is in a, a, in a marriage, a man and a woman? A woman is compassionate more so than a man. A man has a little stronger uh, mannerism about him because he is the head of the house and he has to deal with those children. But mom, that's why we, we truly, we look at mothers and we have memories. I know I do. I had a wonderful mom. I couldn't appreciate her when I was young because I just inexperienced and had to do things my way. But she was a wonderful lady. I have to uh, give a lot to her and my dad for the fact that this day and time I walk with God. And I thank Him for them. And I always have those memories, precious memories. How wonderful that is. She's a woman of means. That You know what that says? It says she's not lazy. I know my mom. She'd get up early. She'd have breakfast when we were in school for us, even before we got up. And she would bring us to the breakfast table and we would just, we would have a wonderful gathering there. We could talk about the day, what we was expecting, but we also had prayer and showed love for each and every one. And that's what it, it's all about. This virtuous woman is a woman of God who is enterprising and dedicated to her family. Dedication. Is that not what we need to be as parents? Dedicated and given to raising a family and honoring God, worshiping God, seeking His way and His uh, blessing upon the family. That says a lot about mom. Now, we want to commit ourselves to this. What I would like to do is ask you on this Mother's Day, you make sure if your mom is still around, you make sure that you go and tell her just what she means to you, how much you love her, and what a difference she has made in your life. Because let's face it, could we do without mom? I know I couldn't have. And I, I know my dad played a big part. But there's something special about mom. There's just something there. Uh, she was there in all our needs and cares just to be able to go and throw our arms around mom and tell her how much we love her and to thank her for all that she's done for us. Now, in closing, I would just like to uh, ask you, did you have a godly mom? I hope and pray you did. Did she teach you Christian values? Did, you, did she teach you about Jesus Christ? If, even if you didn't have a mom like that, there's a church in your area that would love to fill that gap. We would love to teach you about God because that is the most important thing in all of your life. I hope and pray that everyone that we're talking to here this morning are Christians. I hope and pray that you have met Jesus Christ, even as the Apostle Paul on that Damascus road, whatever way God came to you. Did you give your heart to Him? Have you said, come into my heart and save me from my sin? I'll promise you this. If you did ask Him that, He would come into your heart. He would save you. And it's eternal. It's not just for a moment of time, but it's eternal. So I would ask you, if you have not, go to John 3.16, go to Romans 10, and you'll find there the plan of salvation and how God has called upon you and upon all to call on His name. And if you'll do that, I'll promise you, He'll save you. Praise God. Let's close in a word of prayer. Almighty God and our Father in heaven, we love you, Father. Lord, this is a, a wonderful opportunity for outreach, and we thank you, Lord.
for allowing us to do this. But we especially want to thank you for our mothers. Lord, I know many of us have lost moms, but even those that still have their moms, why not take this opportunity and just show her what a great and wonderful thing she's done for you. And Father, I pray, work in these hearts and lives. We would hope that every person that hears this, uh, this message would come to Christ or already has known Christ. And we'll praise you for that. Bless as only you can do, Father. We love you and praise you. And we ask these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen.